It's often considered the Netflix of video games. On Live, a cloud gaming service company, wants to turn any device into a console. It's one of a growing number of companies disrupting the traditional gaming model. Our Chris Valerio rejoins us from the E3 Gaming Conference at Los Angeles to talk more about it. Chris, all yours. Hey, Carol, that's right. And we are lucky to be joined by the founder and CEO of Online, Steve Perlman. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we want to quickly just give our audience an idea of how OnLive is really different and disrupting the traditional gaming model. Well, video games as we know it today, in fact, every other booth except for this one at this show, there's a console, there's a PC, or there's a tablet that's dedicated for the game. The game, you know, maybe works on Xbox, maybe works on PS3. What OnLive has done is we say, you know what, the hardware doesn't matter anymore. The game sits in a server in a data center, it's a cloud game, and it runs on any kind of device, whether it's on your TV, your Blu-ray player, your iPad, your Android tablet, what have you. What we've done is we've taken games out of the realm of software and brought it into the realm of media, just like video or audio. You can expect to play it on anything. So it's this idea of whether consoles are relevant or not, and that's what you said, whether well, bringing that forward. So one quick question. One of the things that you guys brought into this is this idea of a universal wireless controller. Yes. And the controller being able to play video games then on your iPad, on whatever tablet you yes. have, on whatever device you have. Why would someone want to buy another device to accompany another device? Well, they may or may not. So for example, on the iPad or on the uh, Android tablet, if you want to use the games with touch, go right ahead. But suppose that there's a game that you really get into, then maybe you, you prop, you know the iPad's that little cover that make a stand and all the Android things have stands? You just stand it up there and then you can use this control and off you go. Steve, now, there's two different business models that we're talking about here. Yes. One is the cloud and one yes. is hardware. Yes. And so why have you decided after 10 years of this company, uh -huh. and really now everything coming to fruition, uh -huh. to really bet on both of them when you see a lot moving towards just the cloud? Oh, I see. Uh, so. You don't need the, the, the controller's optional. If somebody else made a universal controller, we'd be very happy to get out of that business. Since none exists, we had to invent one, okay? So percentage-wise, as far as your actual income makes is from the streaming services. Oh, yes, that's so let's correct. talk a little bit about the subscription that's because right. one of the things we're seeing, Activision doing their own subscription service. It's worked for Chinese companies for years. The yes. margins are huge yes. when you look at that. Is that a trend that you see continuing? And to what extent will companies that are offering streaming services, do you think, take over from the bigger guys? So you're absolutely correct that A, the margins are bigger, B, How the big market. Well, the margins on um, that publishers see when they have a game released on OnLive versus a game released on a console can be on the order of 3x, okay? So they make much more money. Plus, there's no piracy with cloud gaming and there's no used games. The used game market, when a game is resold in a retailer, none of that revenue goes to the publisher, none of it goes to the console maker. So that long tail that they used to have from, from uh, your continued sales of games has evaporated. But with OnLive, they don't have, a wor have to worry about that because they can lower the price as demand tails off and still benefit from that long tail from the sale of the games. You talk about video games as media. One of the ways that that is really visibly seen is in your new partnership with Facebook. Um, yes. How do you broker a deal with Facebook when it comes to gaming? Do you have to get Zynga involved? Do you have to get all these other people involved? I mean, how, how does that work? Uh, you go over to Facebook and you <laughs> shake hands with the guys and, and that's what we did. <laughs> do I they pay you Zach. money? Do you pay them money? How oh, is that working? So the economics right now are, are very simple. I mean, Facebook Facebook uh, has all these different ways to interface into, into their network, and they worked with us. And you know, we're bringing HD video in, so a few things are new. They put a few tweaks in the thing in order to accommodate on live. But for the most part, it's somewhat of an arm's length relationship. But they love it. They're just they love the are fact they getting you click money on, from it. Uh, yes, well, they're getting all the advertisers. Every time someone's drawn into one of their pages, they benefit from it, and they may get more users. I mean, some of the gamer crowd may not have been Facebook users, you know, et cetera. I have, have to ask you one more question yeah. before we go. Yeah. Intel, new partnership. Yeah. Does that have to do with Google TV? What's going to happen with Google TV, especially when services like OnLive are out? So you're correct that Google TV is based on these Intel chips, the same ones that they announced. So that means that OnLive will run on any TV that's made to be a Google TV. But they're in also other devices, into Blu-ray players. They wanted to get set-top boxes for cable and IPT. TV. So the bottom line is OnLive is going to be running on every different kind of TV. We'll be in 25 million TVs by the end of this year, 50 million Blu-ray players. 50 million Blu-ray players. Steve Perlman, OnLive CEO and founder, thank you so much.